Okay. Uh, uh, hello, uh, everyone again. Um, it's my pleasure today to uh, introduce our speaker, Professor Jen Ji. Um, Jen obtained uh, a bachelor degree in uh, 1982 from uh, Xiamen University in China, and then uh, an uh, MBA in uh, 1986 and uh, a, a PhD degree in uh, um, 1990 from uh, Dalhousie University, I think all in mathematics. Um, she then uh, works as a postdoc um, a professor Francis Clark, and, and then she joined uh, the, the University of Victoria as first as an um, assistant professor in uh, 1992, and then associate professor with Tenue in uh, 1967, and then um, full professor in uh, 2002. Uh, she has been a visiting professor at uh, the Université Université de Po, Université de Perpignan, Université de Toulouse, uh, Hong Kong Polytechnic University, uh, Xiamen University, and uh, Hong Kong Bastip University. Uh, she, she is now an associate editor of two journals, uh, Siam Journal on Optimization and uh, Set Value and uh, Variational Analysis. Um, in uh, 2015, uh, she received the Krieger Nelson Prize of Canadian Mathematical Society. We, we recognize outstanding research by a female mathematician. And uh, today, um, Jane, we talk. Uh, we we are going. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, um, DC algorithm for bilevel programs. Jane, the task is your now. Thank you, Ming, for the introduction, and thank. Uh, the organizers of this uh, webinar series for in invitation. I'm glad to have an uh, opportunity to talk in this seminar. So today I'm, uh, I'm going to talk uh, about difference of convex algorithms for bilevel programs with applications in hyperparameter selection. This is a joint work with Xiaoming Yuan, Shang Zizhen, and Jin Zhang. What? Oh. Okay, so uh, I will first uh, introduce, give an introduction to bilevel programs with backgrounds and applications. Then I will re review our various approaches for solving bilevel programs. And then I will discuss the difference of convex algorithms for bilevel programs. Okay, so uh, we consider this uh, bilevel program. And uh, here, um, uh, Sx denotes the set of optimal solution of the lower level program when the x is fixed. Okay, so, and uh, <coughs> this, uh, this may uh, represent the upper, upper level constraints. Okay, so, uh, Suppose for each X, the lower level problem has a unique solution. So we call it YX. Then uh, by substituting this uh, YX into the upper level, then the bi-level becomes a one level optimization problem. If, uh, if we are lucky, if this, uh, this uh, YX is, uh, uh, can be solved, then, um, then it's just a, uh, uh, functional x, and then you can uh, maybe solve, or maybe you have, uh, it's a nice function like C1 function, and if you can calculate the, the, the gradient, then maybe you can, you can solve the problem. But most uh, bi-level programs, uh, the lower level problem has multiple solutions. Um, then in this case, there are two versions of the bi-level program. One is optimistic, another one is pessimistic. Pessimistic, 
So we will uh, mainly will talk about we will consider optimistic case. Okay, in particular in this talk. So um, a bilateral program is uh, very well known in economics. The first uh, simple case is uh, was introduced by Stepberger in 1934. So in economics, it's also known as a Stepberger game. Okay, and it is, a, it is a fundamental model in in economics, and uh, it's called the classical. Uh, principal agent or moral hazard model. So this is a situation, imagine you have a principal, maybe a boss, and the agent, maybe employee, right? And you cannot, the, uh, the boss cannot always watch uh, how the agent, how the employee will do their work. All they can see is the outcome. And then from the outcome, the boss wants to design um, and, um, and a wage, for example, wages scheme, salary. How 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 can the how can he pay the employee in order to maximize the its uh, uh, utility? Of course, uh, subject to the optimizing behavior of the of the agent. So it's an important problem in economics because the Nobel Prize has been awarded twice for study of moral hazard problem. And uh, uh, the bilateral program was first introduced to the optimization community in 1973. And uh, now uh, uh, it has been used to model machine learning. And it, uh, as we know, the first, the first time was introduced to machine learning is in this paper. And we know that one of the main tasks of machine learning is uh, from given data, you want to design a model which can predict the future. So most of machine learning models have parameters that need to be fixed beforehand. And such parameters are called hyperparameters. And the prediction performance of the machine learning model significantly relies on the choice of hyperparameters. So it has been recognized that this matter is one of the most crucial ones in machine learning. And recently, there are more and more works on hyperparameter optimization and meta learning by bi-level optimization. Okay, so uh, first I'll show you an example. Um, so uh, this is a, uh, uh, um, uh, the problem that well, we are quite familiar with. So suppose we have a set of data, right? And uh, here X uh, A is a vector in Rn. So you have N variables and B is the response variables. And uh, now we try to fit, fit a, a model to study the relationship between A and B. And uh, um, the simplest way is to just assume that A and B are related by a linear relationship. So we want to estimate <coughs> theta, the vector theta. Okay, so now uh, if the numbers of variables uh, of the predictor variables is uh, more than the numbers of uh, samples, okay, so that means you have uh, you have not so many samples. You, 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 you do not have so many samples, but, uh, but the predictor variables are really, really large. Then uh, we cannot use classical linear regression. And because uh, there are some, um, some, some variables really are irrelevant, they should be equal to zero. So uh, if um, the, <clears throat> Tipashoni suggests using the lasso, well-known uh, lasso. And so you need to give, give a, a lambda, the, para, the penalty, penalty parameter. So given this lambda and then solve instead this uh, regularized problem where you add this term uh, with uh, one known. 
And consider lambda, bigger lambda will encourage sparse optimal solution. So the bigger the lambda, the bigger the lambda is, uh, the more zeros the optimal theta will be. But our data are selected from a model. So there is a, there is a true model. So how do you choose select lambda so that the model is correct? So this kind of selection is often performed by T4 cross validation. Okay, so, so the point is that uh, because we all already do not have uh, a lot of data, so we cannot uh, afford to to use uh, to 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 keep take out some data for testing. So we will use the same same data, same same set of data. So we will randomly split it into uh, t disjoint blocks. So maybe three or five or ten, and then. For each T, okay, we'll use uh, one, one block as the test set. So keep, keep it. And then the rest, T minus one blocks as the training set. And then we just do the, the uh, solve the Lasso problem and we compute a minimizer called set of T, okay? Then step three, uh, we want to test how good this uh, this uh, uh, set of t is. So we compute the validation mean square error on the observation in the test set. So this test set is uh, is is uh, left for testing, right? So we 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 use this uh, test set and we 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 find the mean square error. Okay. And of course you want this uh, test error to be as small as possible. Uh, okay, so we compute and we did this for all T, right? So then we compute the average, the average uh, uh, mean square error and call it the cross validation error. And then we repeat the step two and three for different values of uh, lambda, okay? then. We want to find the lambda star that minimize the cross validation error. And in the meantime, uh, we'll find theta star, which is the best fitted value. Okay, so this is a procedure of T4 cross validation. So it looks, uh, yeah, he, 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 it, it seems a very uh, good, but uh, how, do you, how, how do you find, how do you do the step five? That's a, that's a problem. So in statistics, either a grid search or pass following algorithm is performed on lambda value. To select the value of lambda for which cross validation error is the smallest. But these uh, approaches do not scale well and have a lot of limitations. But uh, uh, in fact, the cross validation in Lasso is the following bi-level program. Here, uh, given lambda, the penalty parameter, and for each four t, we we can solve the lasso problem using the using the training set, right? And then we want to minimize the cross validation error. So uh, the buff problem, if the this uh, bi level program can be solved, then we can attempt the optimal penalty parameter, lambda star, and the best fitted value, theta star at once. Okay, so now I'm going to review the uh, approaches for solving a bi-level program. And later I'll give another, uh, another examples for machine learning. So uh, if, uh, the, if the lower level problem is like this, and if it is convex and all the functions are smooth and the slater condition holds, then it is necessary and sufficient for the KKT condition to hold. So see here, 
uh, we, we can find a multiplier, right? Uh, such that KKD condition hold at the solution. However, you cannot use this as a constraint because here is a existence. So it is popular to solve, to, to make a, a lambda as an extra variable and uh, minimize uh, on X, Y, and lambda and using this KKD condition as constraint instead. So this is well known as a problem uh, MPEG or MPCC. Okay, but there are some issues. First, this approach is only applicable if the problem functions are smooth. Second, the condition, the complementarity constraint Okay, this is a complementarity constraint. If we treat it as equality and inequality constraints, right? Then the usual constraint qualification, such as Montessori for one way constraint qualification, we just call it MFCQ, uh, will never hold. Okay, and if MFCQ does not hold, then a local minimizer may not satisfy KKT condition and the numerical algorithm may not be stable. So, okay. And uh, uh, another issue is that if the lower level has multi multiple multipliers, then uh, it has been shown that local solution to MPCC may not recover a local solution of the original bilevel program. So MPEG is not reliable. Okay, and now another approach is called the value function approach. So if, if we uh, define the, the optimal value of the lower level, okay, so fix X, so this is a minimum, the optimal value. And then we, we can uh, equivalently rewrite the, our bilevel program into this form. Okay, so instead of saying that Y is in a solution, we say that F must uh, have value uh, less equal to the optimum value. Okay, so, but uh, the, there's an, uh, more difficult, other kind of difficulties. The value function is implicitly defined. Okay, and in general, it is non-smooth. So we need to find, uh, at least if we cannot solve this problem, at least we need to find some gradients or subgradients of some kind. The second difficulty is that even if all defining functions are smooth, the value function still, uh, uh, VP, the problem VP is still a non-smooth optimization problem. Even if all functions involve the value functions are Lipsy's continuous, uh, MFCQ or the now we should say non-smooth MFCQ never hold. Okay, so uh, first uh, difficulty involve uh, finding at least uh, subdifferential of of the value function. So uh, what will be the formula of the of the subdifferential of the value function? We can look at a simple case. Suppose we have a uh, unconstrained lower level, right? And suppose uh, F is uh, C1 and convex in Y. Then the first order condition is this, right? And it's necessary and sufficient. So suppose we have a solution Y bar corresponding to the uh, uh, goal level with uh, X bar. And then we can, we can uh, Okay, so suppose we can try to solve, uh, solve y as a function of x by using the classical implicit function theory, right? So now uh, you can see that if the Hessian matrix is uh, non-singular, then we can uh, obtain a single value, a C1 map. Okay, so then you can replace the value function by, you can represent the value function by using the yx. And then we can just 
use use the chain rule, right? You can you can derive this, but we know uh, y x is a solution, so gradient must be equal to zero. So this is the the formula. So here, if under this very very nice extremely nice conditions, then how will you ca calculate the value function? The gradient of value function, you just take the gradient of the f and the, at uh, respect to x and then plug in your unique optimizer, yx. Okay, if it's not so ideal, so for example, we have, um, uh, we do not have a unique solution, then the, uh, we have a, uh, the Dunskin theorem says that you, so here is a not, not single term, right? So you have, and more than one vector, you take the convex hull. But this is uh, the so-called, uh, this is equal to the Clark subdifferential. Okay, so you can calculate the Clark subdifferential value function like this. But in general, lower level has, a, uh, has a inequality constraints. So we can see uh, what will be the formula. If suppose we have a, a lower level has a unique solution still in the, call it yx. And if we know yx is uh, c1, then we can just try again uh, by the chain rule, get this. But this is no longer equal to zero, right? Um, because we have constraint. So suppose KKT holds the multiplies unique and it's a smooth condition, a smooth function, okay? Then we can differentiate the complementary slackness condition and we can get this. Right? Again, respect to X, respect to Y. But then by KKT condition, we have this, e this equals this. So see, we have this. So what's this? This is just Lagrangian respect to the gradient of Lagrangian respect to X. And when the Y is uh, equal to the solution Y, X. So now it, this gives, although this uh, needs a very strong condition, it, get, it gives us an idea how the formula should look of the, of the subdifferential or value function should look like. Okay, so now that KTXY denotes the cell of KKT multiplier for lower level. So by Guivan, uh, if MSCQ holds at each solution, and if the feasible region is uniform bounded, then you can calculate the value, the Clark subdifferential of value function by, uh, you, can, you can actually only calculate the, the upper estimate. okay? So you need to take the convex hall because now in general, you have um, multiple solution and uh, multiple uh, multiplier. So you need to take convex hall, all these elements. But this part, you see, still is uh, uh, equal to the gradient of the Lagrangian respect to X. Okay, and uh, this uh, we can also find, of course, this is, uh, uh, this, uh, over the years, these uh, uh, assumptions and up, an upper estimate has been improved. Okay, so uh, another second difficulty is about constraint qualifications. So uh, why this does not, uh, the, the, why the, the, the non-smooth MFCQ will never hold? That's because this value function constraint is actually an equality constraint because it always greater or equal zero. And then, uh, but if we consider put uh, is wrong uh, re in place of zero here, then we will just uh, require y to be some kind of proximal solution, is wrong proximal solution of a lower level. And then this is no longer equality. And uh, so in this case, non smooth MFCQ may hold. Okay, so the, uh, we, can, uh, we can use, if we want to sacrifice a little bit, then we can, we can use this reformulation. And, and we'll see how we can use this fact later. Okay, and I, I, I'm going to review uh, two algorithms, uh, existing algorithms. First one, I uh, suppose lower level has no inequality constraint, just, uh, just a set, uh, Y, compact set Y. 
And Y star is the optimus solution. Then, okay, then you can write this like this, right? Because it's a uh, log and, and exponential is inverse. So this is exactly the same, okay? And if we replace, uh, of course, this is the, uh, we, we, cannot, we cannot find y, y start always. So we, if we reply this uh, optimal value, okay, by its average, you know, by using integration, then we can define this uh, so-called entropy integral function. And this, uh, so this is an approximation of the value function. And uh, then we can, um, we can uh, obtain a smooth approximation problem by replacing the V, the value function by this. And then we can, uh, we can, um, we can solve the problem by solving this approximation problem. It's one algorithm. And the second algorithm I want to show you is that if you have a polynomial data, okay, so all functions are polynomial. Uh, one way to reformulate the lower level solution, so Y is a lower level solution, uh, means that Y is feasible. So G is less equal to zero. So suppose uh, we do not have a, a set constraint, so just a whole space capital Y's whole space. And also uh, because Y must be an optimal solution. So we, we must have this uh, inequality if, uh, if Y prime is uh, any uh, feasible, feasible point of the, of the lower level. Okay, so this is, see, see this is a, a, a kind of semi-infinite programming uh, constraint. Okay, this is uh, because uh, the solution, uh, the, the feasible region is uh, infinite. Okay, so, and this is actually generalized semi-infinite programming because here a feasible region depends on X. So when all functions are polynomial and KKD condition holds, we can define a multiplier of the lower level problem as a polynomial or, oops, sorry. Uh, or, okay, so we can solve, we can solve, we can express the multiplier as a function of x, y. Yeah, recall that we don't want to use multiplier as an actual variable because it will create more problems. Okay, but uh, in this case, we will solve lambda as a, fun a function of x and y, okay? And then you use the, uh, this, uh, this, this uh, SIP constraint, um, Mm, then and uh, and the uh, KKT condition, but with the multiplier expression. And based on this reformulation, recently we have proposed a numerical algorithm to globally solve this uh, polynomial by level program. Okay, uh, so the question is, uh, how do we solve a non-smooth by level program? As we can see that uh, in Lasso problem, we have L1 norm. And later, uh, I will show you in uh, support vector machine problem, we also have a non-smooth problem. Okay, so, but uh, almost all algorithms require smoothness of the defining functions. And sometimes, of course, non-smoothness can be dealt with by introducing auxiliary variables and constraints to reformulate a non-smooth lower level program as a smooth one, but then the number of variables or constraints will increase. And moreover, we already know that the MPEG approach is not reliable due to the actual variables from Lagrangian multipliers. And the smoothing function approach is only, uh, can only uh, implement with the dimension of lower level is very small. And also polynomial by level algorithms also have restriction in the numbers of variables. Yeah, but the, in the machine, uh, machine learning problem, usually data are quite large. So how do we solve this problem? Uh, okay, uh, now we notice that if, uh, okay, if we have in the lower level problem, if we had this kind of problem where uh, both F and G are completely convex. So it, 
uh, we say completely convex if all functions are convex in both variables, not just in Y. And Y, capital Y is a convex set. In this case, the value function is convex and the value function constraint becomes a difference of convex constraint. So multiply this, motivated by this, we look for a DC program. Okay, so uh, actually many functions can be represent as a difference of convex functions. For example, lower C2 functions and C1 plus functions are all C2 functions. And the class of these DC functions is closed under many operations. So uh, the difference of convex program, uh, difference of convex algorithm called DCA can be used to solve such a DC program. Okay, so here, the objective and the constraint are DC functions and C is a closed convex subset. And here we, the here all functions are required to be convex and Lipschitz continuous. And also we need the extended MFCQ. So extended means that at MSCQ also holds at infeasible point. So in point, in, for a point in, uh, in C only. Okay, and the idea is, the, is to linearize the concave part and then use the, uh, 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 because if the, if the concave part is linearized, then all functions becomes a convex, prob convex function and then you can solve a convex subproblem. Okay, so we consider this uh, uh, difference, difference of a convex bilevel program. So here, objective function allowed to, to be a difference of convex. And, um, but uh, the lower level program, here, all the functions are required to be completely convex. Okay, and we also uh, assume these, uh, uh, these uh, conditions. Yeah, so that uh, the, the so that we will have uh, ellipses and convex functions. Okay. Now, uh, so uh, here, notice that we still require the the lower level to be uh, actually completely convex, but uh, this may this requirement may be may be strong, but uh, in this paper. Uh, the authors show that if the lower level objective function is in this form, okay, F1 plus F2, where F2, okay, F2 is convex, okay, and uh, F1 is convex for each Y1 in X, okay, but in, in Y, in, but it is uniformly strongly convex in y in y1 then in this case you can add a term a quadratic term with some uh, large uh, positive number beta and then in this case the lower level program can be, be formulated as a uh, um, complete convex function and we won't change the solutions okay and the program the lower level program becomes the lower uh, becomes completely convex Okay, and we have these uh, standing assumptions. So first we assume the solution set is non-empty. And for all X, uh, we, uh, X in the open, open convex set, including, including the capital X, the feasible for X, the feasible region is of the lower level problem is non-empty and it's bounded below. So this, this is just to ensure that uh, the value function will, will not be negative infinity. And uh, we also assume this as uh, so a partial directive formula. Um, this represents the, the, the convex subdifferential. And we know that for convex subdifferential, uh, we may not always have this uh, 
this uh, equation, okay? And uh, we, for our uh, result to work within this. And, but uh, and, uh, in a lot of applications, this is not hard to meet because uh, for example, if the function is uh, sum of, uh, is separate, separate function, okay? Uh, phi one X plus phi two Y. Or if it is C1 respect to either X or Y. And our machine learning examples satisfy this. Okay, so uh, if we look at the lasso problem, because we have lambda as the upper level and theta as the lower level. And so lambda times uh, one norm of theta are not completely convex, right? So, um, but we can, we can just uh, divide the lower level objective, okay, by lambda and then change the variable. Okay, so now it becomes this, and uh, this is this function is a uh, is a uh, is a uh, completely convex in x and r. So in this case, we can change, we can uh, we can reformulate the, the lower level of the Lasso problem as a completely convex bilevel program, and all the and here uh, uh, the function uh, cross validation function is convex. Okay, so everything is okay. So we can use a DC algorithm to solve this, this problem. Okay, so now I'm going to show you uh, uh, another example. Uh, okay, uh, because uh, uh, for Lasso problem, you only have one parameter, one uh, hyperparameter that is lambda. Okay, so here we will have more. Okay, so consider the, uh, so uh, what is first the review what what is uh, so called support vector classification suppose we have a set of uh, data point so like this uh, picture like we have two two kind of data points right you have a, a blue dot and a triangle and we want to separate uh, with uh, with some some uh, uh, <coughs> We actually, here we want to separate by this band, yeah, because they are not completely, uh, you cannot completely se separate by a, a line, right? So, and uh, so now we are going to find the this uh, this band, okay, and so that uh, we are we will minimize the points on the wrong side and maximize the margin of the separation, which is two over uh, norm of W. Okay, so go back to the quiz. Okay, so you, you have a, a, a set of um, a de data set, okay? And here, a, here B I, BJ is uh, plus one or negative one, indicate uh, which class they belong to. And uh, we want to use a um, hyper, hyper plane and uh, to separate. So a uh, given lambda, okay, the, uh, the support vector classification is to solve this, right? It, it minimizes the trail of, of the uh, numbers of misclassified points and the size of the margin. And we can also add the box constraint to the W. Okay, so now, uh, Okay, so now the hyperparameters are not just lambda, also include uh, this uh, bound of the of the W. Okay, so given given the W, given the uh, W bar, you can solve this uh, as a support vector machine problem here. Okay, given lambda, given W bar. Both on the on the closed the close the interval, and for each uh, again we use cross validation. So for each fold, you solve this uh, support vector machine uh, support vector classification problem. Okay, 
And then this is the cross validation, uh, the, the, the average um, cross valid, the average uh, mean square error. Um, here is not mean square error, it's uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, hinge loss function. So, and this, uh, this is the so-called the bilevel model for support vector classification using T4 class cross validation in this paper. Exactly uh, in this paper, this is uh, the exact problem. Okay, so now the parameter is lambda and, and W bar, uh, upper level, upper level variable. And the lower level is uh, the W and C. Okay. So uh, again, by change of variable lambda to mu equals uh, one over lambda, we can reformulate the buff uh, support vector by level model selection problem equivalently as the following by level program with a completely convex lower level program. Again, here, this objective function of up level is convex and you have some, some constraints here, bound constraints. And then this is a, this is solution of this, uh, of this lower level support vector machine problem, given the mu and the W bar. So now, uh, what is the difficulties? Uh, consider we have this DC bilateral program, right? Now uh, here, this uh, value function is uh, uh, is uh, in, is uh, implicit, right? It, it is not, uh, uh, and it is uh, in general is uh, extended value, and uh, so on. So, but uh, in order to apply the DC algorithm, we need uh, to uh, to to make to, to, to investigate the condition under which the value function is convex and lower ellipsis. Okay, it's convex for sure, but uh, you need lower ellipsis on the convex set. And also you need to attend one element of the sub-differential. Also, what about the extended NFCQ? So we'll now let's discuss these uh, issues. Uh, so using the convex analysis, uh, in Rockefeller, we can we can make the standing assumptions number one, okay, and then uh, we in this in this case all the functions including the value functions is convex and lower semi and uh, locally Lipschitz continues on the capital X, and uh, uh, now uh, it is maybe easier to understand this is an and this this uh, this is a kind of like a subgradient of the Lagrangian respect to X. And this kind of, it, because uh, now it's a convex uh, problem, uh, convex, uh, completely convex problem. And so this actually uh, the included in the subdifferential. okay? Here without any condition, without any, any extra condition, it's included. So we can select an element from here. Okay, so here is a KKT multiplier. Okay, so uh, we talk about the approximate bilevel program, right? And so now uh, we consider the approximate bilevel program. And uh, in this, in our complete convex case, we actually can prove that this. Uh, Extended NFCQ always hold without any condition. So uh, we can uh, uh, we can use approximate uh, uh, by the approximate um, by level DC by level program. Okay, and when this one is small, the the solution of the approximate by level program will approximate a true solution of the original program. As shown here in this paper. Okay, so uh, let's see how we can uh, we can design algorithm. So we call inexact proximal difference or convex algorithm. And here, given a current iteration point, right, x k y k, 
we can solve the lower level program PXK with a global minimizer because it's convex program. Then uh, a corresponding multiplier denote by lambda k. Okay, and we select here um, a subdifferential from the, the concave part of the object, objective function capital F2. This is an um, upper level objective. And then the, for the low level, we can select uh, this element, C1k. Okay, from, from this, and then this is one element according to our th uh, theory. It is uh, one element in the subdifferential of the value function. So then we can compute xk plus one, yk plus one as a proximal minimizer of the following strongly convex of a problem. So here we linearize the, the objective, uh, the concave part of the, of the upper level objective, right? And we add a proximal term uh, to make it strongly convex. And here is the linearization of the value function. Okay, and the beta k is like a penalty parameter. So here is like a, a value function, a proximal the value function construct. Then we, then this is a, a convex, a convex program. And then we, uh, after we solve, we update the parameter, penalty parameter, beta k plus one. So this is the, we, we call in exact proximal difference of convex algorithm. Okay, so the, now we can state the, uh, first we state uh, what is the, uh, uh, what is the so-called KKD point? Uh, here is uh, the difference of convex subdifferential. Okay, so this difference of convex. And then here we have theorem. So we, 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 we do not need a much uh, assumption at all. We only assume that upper level objective is bounded below on C. And, uh, and this is the iteration, X, K, Y, K is the iteration sequence. And uh, we, we don't even assume any uh, uh, constraint qualifications. We only assume that uh, for each Y solution in S, X, K, this uh, K, K, T, multiply is non-empty, that's all. And suppose that either is wrong, positive. In this case, we don't need any constraint qualification because it satisfied automatically. Or if is wrong equals zero, we solve the original problem, not the proximal problem. And then this case, we, if we, we know that our penalty sequence is bounded, then any accumulation point is a KKT point of the problem. Okay, so uh, let's uh, look at the numerical experiments. Here, this, we, we, we conduct numerical ex experiment on the support vector by level pro model. Okay, so here is the support vector by level model. And uh, okay, so for this, uh, you give a current iterate solved iterate solve the lower level uh, support vector machine problem. We obtain a solution and then a KKT multiplier. And because in this case upper level is uh, objective is convex, so we do not have the uh, we don't have need to have the linearization part for concave part. And because in this case actually the an element in subdifferential of the value function is very easy to calculate because notice that the function, objective function f of the lower level and constraint are smooth in variable mu and w bar. So you can easily calculate this. So then uh, we can now, uh, we use uh, some data sets to, to do some uh, numerical experiments. So we, we here are the uh, description of the data sets. So first three are uh, uh, smaller com 
and this last the 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 last two are very large size. Okay, so recall that the numbers of the upper level variables is uh, equal to the number of hyperparameters for the data set. So they are n plus one. So this is the 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 bounds uh, w w bar and also plus the 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 parameter uh, lambda. So you have n plus one. So it is this number plus one. That's the, the number of hyperparameters. And the numbers of lower level variable is three times uh, n plus one. Okay, so uh, because now we're going to use uh, first three smaller complete compared to uh, the smaller data sets to compare the result with MPEG approach. That is because if we use MPEG approach, uh, you will, uh, the size will will increase because you 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 need to uh, change uh, change the problem from non-smooth to smooth by in, smooth uh, by increasing constraints and and uh, and so on and, and numbers of variables and so on. Okay, so if we but uh, if we compare with the uh, MPEG approach, you see that okay the the results are, are about the same or maybe even better the error. Uh, but the, the time is uh, significantly shorter because for the MPEG approach, uh, time are significantly um, larger. And then we compare, we, we calculate, our, we use our algorithm to two big data sets, right? So in these, they're too interesting to see that. Uh, so here, uh, the, 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 the numbers of hyperparameters are 112 and 69, respectively. That's quite large. And for this kind of problem, it's not. Uh, using grid search is almost impossible. And uh, here, uh, we can look at, we interesting to see that even we can, we can calculate the, the, the result with the uh, original problem without uh, relaxing, without approximation. So it's not equal zero. And uh, we can still get result, but the, the time is uh, longer. But uh, this is maybe uh, not surprising because uh, the maybe constraint qualification does not satisfy. But still we can get the result. So uh, I don't know. Uh, so, I have my time's up. <laughs> oh. So the results of this paper are mainly based on, of this talk are mainly based on this paper. And uh, uh, in the revision, we have, uh, we have put on a, um, um, open source Python uh, program in, the, in this for our algorithm. Thank you. Thank you, Jen, for your very nice talk with the detailed presentation. Uh, and now is the time for discussions. Uh, everyone, if you have um, any uh, question or comment, please unmute yourself and uh, ask, uh, and talk with uh, Jen, please. Um, Maybe I have um, the first questions. Mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, sure. Jen, uh, in in your I think in your exact version uh, with the yeah, epsilon exactly. equals zero, you need yeah. to control you need to control the the parameter beta right such that it bounded. No, because in 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 the I think yeah we do not we something. do not guarantee right when it's bounded yeah. yes then uh, we guarantee to have. But uh, even with even without the boundaries, uh, sometimes you can still get a. Okay. So the, the, but in, yeah. in practice, just not guarantee. Just not okay. guarantee to work. We don't okay. have theory. We don't have okay. theory to prove it. But uh, for these, uh, it happened. It just it okay. just works. But in, in practice, it is it, still correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For these uh, data sets, it work. Right here, okay. here also is not equal to zero. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, that good. So it's still open for for, for Yes, yeah, the yeah, yeah. 
за кайфа. Why, why, why is still work? No, just no theory. No theory. To prove. We cannot prove. Yeah, we cannot prove. That. Yeah, of course, it's not probably not true <laughs> if not about okay. it. Well, okay. Yeah, but uh, just, yeah. But it's just not 100% sure. We are not sure. We cannot say it is true. Okay. Yeah, um, I have a conceptual question okay. because yeah. um, you showed these old algorithms that uh, first smooth everything out and then apply a classical method, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, of course, the problem with such methods is always that when you have this parameter and you want to drive it to zero, then basically the methods tend to get very slow at the points in question where, where everything is, is a bit uh, uh, mm -hmm. tricky. So on the other hand, you introduced a, an algorithm that works with an epsilon subdifferential, and I'm not so familiar oh, with- Oh, it's not epsilon subdifferential. Or, or, or a perturbed problem or something. Can, yeah, you, can, you, go, yeah. can yeah, you go there? Yeah, okay. So it is, Yeah, here, here, you see, instead of zero, if this is zero, then uh, Y is the solution to the lower level problem, right? But if yeah, we put exactly. a, a positive number, then Y is just a strong uh, optimal solution. Yeah, and in a sense, this is a little bit similar. I mean, now you also, um, introduce a little error somewhere. I mean, like the old algorithms introduce a little error like in the uh, in the differential or, you know, and here also we introduce a little yeah. error and, and allow some inaccuracy. And oh, so yeah, my question, right. yeah, is, is um, conceptual. Um, like, yeah. does this, uh, is this, is this better than smoothing out? I mean, um, is this a, a better place to introduce an error? Uh, can we say something about that? We actually, uh, in, when we introduce Ethron, we fix it. We do not change it all the time, you know? It, you, you just uh, just make a small number, then yeah. uh, you work with a, with a fixed number, Yeah. right? Yeah, that's different from uh, smoothing because we don't smooth it. Yeah, we use but, fix. We but just what said is, that we will be happy with uh, with uh, low level not being uh, uh, not completely solution, but uh, it's an almost solution. Then we are we are just happy, and that's uh, in, in the real world. This is enough, right? Nobody yes. really want to. Yeah. But is it possible to say something about the effect of this approach on the algorithm? Uh, effect on the algorithm. Yeah, so so with uh, with uh, Islam positive, we have shown that the extended MFCQ holds automatically. So convergence yeah. are without any assumption. But with uh, original problem, we do not have this assumption at all. Yeah. So we 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 can only say, well, if the uh, penalty parameters are bounded. We uh, we have we have uh, we we have convergence. If not, then we we are we don't know. That this okay. is maybe a research question to 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 study. We do not know what will happen yeah. in the original case, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then I understand. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So this is in exact algorithm. So here in this part, we in this in this part we do not here's the uh, numerically we do not need to find exact solution for this uh, sub sub problem we only need to find approximate solution yeah but this is long is a fixed right so when we fix it then it is but here here is a kind of different because we can quantify is long right uh, uh, what what is an Islam solution we can quantify? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so, uh, any other question or comment? Um, 
Jen, uh, maybe um, maybe yeah. a naive questions. Uh, yeah. So, um, do you compare the uh, the 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 bi uh, the bi level um, model of a vector machine problem with the the single level of vector machine problem? Oh, I, I uh, mean, so, so so as I understand, in this, for example, in in the um, in the so in the example. Yeah, say so, say so this uh, this is a support vector machine, right? If yeah. the you want to classify, yeah, if, 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 uh, yeah, if, then if, you will I, I got one only single model, so is that, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you you fix uh, you fix lambda, yeah, and, fix lambda. And then you 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 do this training, right? But the uh, but the but the how do you choose lambda? How yeah, do you choose lambda and uh, w bar to get a good good uh, Good effect. I I think in in practice the people that um, um that do it by by um uh experiment right that the python yes that's a point try yes and error, try and error. <laughs> exactly yeah yeah that's a point yeah you or, or do a research you know you you have calc you you have to do a lot of work and and maybe it's still not so good. <laughs> Okay. Try and error, yes, and that's the point of using bi-level model. You can you can uh, have exactly right correct correct hyperparameters. So I uh, assuming you know all the all the machine learning uh, models have some kind of parameter, right? Yeah, Quick, yeah. yeah, fixed numbers, but those uh, numbers are very important, right? If you use the wrong number, then the result. Are yes, not yeah. Yeah, and sometimes it's sometimes it's it's very um, yeah yeah very yeah. time consuming to <laughs> yeah to yeah and even even uh, uh, if you can get a, a number there is no there is no uh, no sound reason why uh, they are the correct number yes, and uh, yes. but the uh, this if you use the bilevel model it's like uh, very precise. Okay. Yeah. Thank uh -huh. you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so if um, there there is uh, no question from um, audience, so let uh, join me to thanks uh, Jane again for a very nice talk. And um, thank you, thank you for your attention. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you again, Jane, yeah, for, <laughs> for giving you talk here. And uh, and you yeah. you actually you attract the um, very uh, many audience oh yeah, we, we, we appreciate it the record number indeed thank you okay thank you thank you jane